Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Suppose f is a function from a to b and c is a subset of a. If f is injective, then so is the restriction of f to c. Now, before we get into the proof, if you recall, the restriction of f to c is a function from c to b. And we have that for every element x in c, the restriction of f to c evaluated at x is equal to f evaluated at x. Right? So f and the restriction of f to c essentially do the same thing. The only difference is, is we're restricting the domain of f to the domain c. Right? And that's the idea. Now, what does it mean for f to be injected? Well, if you recall, what that means is, for every two elements, x1 and x2 in A, if f of x1 equals f of x2, then x1 is equal to x2. Similarly, what does it mean for f restricted to C to be injected? It means that for every two elements, x1 and x2 in C, if f restricted to C of x1 equals f restricted to C of x2, then x1 is equal to x2. Okay, so now let's get into the proof. Let's suppose that we're already given a function f from a to b and c is a subset of a, and our whole goal now is to prove if f is injective, then f restricted to c is injective. So let's suppose that f is injective. Our whole goal now is to prove that f restricted to c is also injective, which means we're trying to prove that this statement is true. And we're trying to prove a statement about every two elements in c. So give me any two elements in c. I'll call them x1 and x2. And our goal with x1 and x2 is to prove if this is true, then this is true. And we're actually going to prove the contrapositive. That is, we're going to prove if this is false, then this is false. So let's suppose that x1 is not equal to x2. Now, since x1 and x2 are elements of C, and C is a subset of A, it follows that x1 and x2 are both elements of A. And now, we're going to apply the fact that f is injective. Right? Because f is injective, what that means is, is we know that this first statement is true. And this first statement works for every two elements in A. So it must work for the x1 and x2 that we have in our proof. So we have that if this is true, then this is true. And by the contrapositive, that means we know if this is false, then this is false. Well, this is false. That's exactly what we have right here. So we can conclude that this is false. But remember, for every element x and c, f restricted to c evaluated at x is equal to f of x. So if we take this idea and apply it to x1 and x2, we get f restricted to c of x1 is equal to f of x1, and f restricted to c of x2 is equal to f of x2. So we can take f of x1 and replace it with f restricted to c of x1, and we can take f of x2 and replace it with f restricted to c of x2. So we have proven that this is false. So putting this together, we gave ourselves two arbitrary elements in C and supposed that this is false. And from here, we were able to deduce that this is false. So that means if this is true, then this is true. And since these two elements of C were arbitrary, this means for every two elements in C, this is true. So we've proven this entire statement, which means we've proven that the restriction of F to C is injective. And so this completes the proof. And so, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.